thank you so much for coming, for sticking around and not leaving the campus for your spring break. Today we are going to engage mainly in a hands-on activity to try together DocuWiki to start creating a page and that will be eventually developed into your last digital assignment and your last assignment of course will be the project after that for you to work on but the creation of a page with DocuWiki showcasing some of the beginners level or intermediate level features will be your next assignment which is due three weeks two or three weeks from now you, you can check on the syllabus I showed you on Wednesday how a DocuWiki wiki is installed but you don't have to do that yourself because I'll do the work we will use the test site that was created for the class in 2020 and that's where starting today you will have access one of the steps we'll go through today will be your self registration as a user and as a user you will then be able to log in and gain access to a space that i have created for you that will become the page for your assignment if later on you decide that you want to use DocuWiki for your final project, you just have to send me an email and I will create a space devoted to your project within the same testing wiki where you will have uh, all the editing rights and you will be able to determine, it'll be your choice, whether the wiki of your final project should be public or whether it should be accessible just to you and me okay and you have to communicate that to me because as the super manager the super user of the wiki i have access to the panel that controls what can be done to a page by whom okay so keep that in mind we are working from within a wiki that I created. No installation is required on your part and all the work will be done through your browser. Even if you have a smartphone, that is perfectly fine, that is perfectly doable, but everything will be done through a browser within this test site and you don't have to go through the process of installing the wiki yourself. So, as you can see, this is the plan for today, and I added a link to the test site. Uh, the login is required, and I'll show you how we're going to go through that. Okay, so follow me. I, I need your attention because I will open the registration process for just a minute, and then I will close it again because the moment I modify the configuration of the wiki to allow people to register themselves, anyone would be able to register and become a member of the wiki. So I'll just do it for a minute because you, you really have to do three things. You have to provide a username and follow this standard for the username usernames in DocuWiki as well as the name, not the title, but the name of a page have to be all in lowercase. Usually if you violate that rule, the system will correct itself. You won't break the wiki by using capital letters, but of course it's not good practice to test the limits and to go outside the conventions of the system. So, as far as the username, you will put your first name in lower letters, followed by an underscore or a hyphen, okay? And then the initial of your last name, okay? This has to be your username. Okay. 
then of course you will have to add your real name and again it has to be your real name that will not be displayed what will be displayed on the screen because the system of course is the, the software on the server is tracking who is doing what so uh, and that is done through the username okay so this will be displayed your real name will not be displayed but you have to put your real name you kind of put santa claus or superman and of course since there is a little bit of risk involved in opening registration to anyone when i go to my office i'll go through the list of users and any name that i don't associate to a student in this class will be any user profile with the name a name that is not associated to a student in this class will just be deleted okay so use this standard either underscore iphone and your first name put your real name and then you will have to add your email and of course has to be your stony brook edu email again don't use your private email you should never use your private email for any university assignment right your private email address should be kept private use your edu name again if i find any email address that is not edu and that is not the email that i have in file on file i have to delete the user profile uh, in case it's a hacker or a bomber uh, uh, the, whatever you want to call them borrowing from the language of zoom bombing okay so once i open the registration you will be able to see here on the screen of course i've logged in already right but once i open the registration in this area of the screen you will find a link that says register you will click there you will have a panel asking you these three pieces of information you put in your name and initial in uh, uh, lowercase letter and you have to use a hyphen or an underscore because you cannot put a space there add your real name add your stony brook email the password will be generated a safe a secure password will be generated automatically by the server and the server will within a second send an email to your stony brook address matching the information you have provided telling you you've created an account with this username and will include the message will include your password of course write down your password you know that after the login you can reset your password and have another one sent if you don't, don't like the password of course the password will be a random series of characters lowercase and uppercase etc if you'd rather have a special kind of password you can email me and i can set it up but really there is no need for that keep in mind however since this is a templated message sent by an external server keep in mind that sometimes the stony brook university filter which is kind of heavy compared to what they use in other university in some instances this might be redirected to the trash to the spam folder rather okay so if within 60 seconds you don't see inside your email the message from the server with your password then go check your spam folder and most probably you will find it there if not i'm here to correct any issues because i can uh, set up a new password after you've created your user profile i can enter and set up a different password you can just come here and you bring a piece of paper where you write your username and the password itself okay is that clear enough and please stay with me don't skip this don't uh, be somewhere else while we're doing this because you will only have a short time to register too big let's put it this way
So you can follow the steps that I'm taking. Being the super user and therefore the manager of the wiki, I have access to the administrative tools and the configuration. So what I'm do doing now is clicking on admin, which is something you will not have access to as regular users. And inside, I find a lot of things, as you can see. Some are connected to the plugins, but as you can see, I will be able to see you as registered users in here. And, and therefore, for example, at the end of the semester, I delete the profiles of the students. I can see the extensions that I installed and update those extensions. I can modify the settings of the template that I've chosen. And what I'll do now, and I have, can regulate access, the access control list, the ACL management means that I can say, I can select one page in the wiki and say, this is the permission that I set. In fact, let me show you how it works. This is the ACL page. As you can see, all the areas, this is the root, right? So the root includes my first page and start, and these are other folders or containers. And one of them, you see, is 2022. <coughs> if I click on the plus, I find test pages, and I find one, page number 44, that I created under a demo profile, and I find another page called students. And if I click on anything, let's say I click on test page, then you, it was very quick, but you may have noticed that this changed as well. And I have a drop-down menu that presents the option, for example, what are the permission for all users, all visitors. In the group that is labeled all, which means anyone who visits this page and the following pages, because of course there is a hierarchy and whatever privilege you set at one level, it transfers through the lower level. But in the case of all users at all, this is the permission they have, just read. And you see the different levels. You can go to none, which means if they click, they won't see any content at all. The page is locked. To read, which means they can just view the page. Edit means they can open the page and make changes. Create means they can create another page. And of course, every level incorporates the previous levels. So someone who can edit can also read. Someone who can create a new page starting from the page I gave them access to, can also edit and read. Upload means, of course, you can upload materials such as video, uh, images, etc. And the highest level is delete. And how do you delete a page? You create a page by creating a link to a page that doesn't exist. And then you click on that link, you add content to that page. Deleting is just the opposite process. You go to a page you want to delete, you edit it. Once you are in the editing mode, you select all the contents of that page, you hit delete, the page becomes empty. Then you save that page as empty. At that point, the link you created in order to access that empty page becomes red from green turns red with a dotted line underneath. You go to the page where that link existed and you eliminate that link. At that point, the page is completely erased. Of course, there is versioning, there is a history of the page, so things can be reversed, okay? So if anything, if you find any major problem with your page while you're working and you think you need to go back to a previous version before you deleted something accidentally, you have to contact me via email. I'm your support, I'm your assistant, technical assistance, and I can enter the page and restore a previous version. Okay, so this would be the permission to all. Let's see what happens to instead user, right? 
Now, user, user would be every user whose profile has been created inside this wiki, which will be you in five minutes, okay? So, once you become a registered user of the system, within this group, which is your test pages for the assignment, again, I can just find the narrative, the, the text that tells me for, for these pages, this is the list of privileges. You can read, you can edit, you can create, meaning you can create other pages from there. And of course, this can be, the, the way the access can be regulated is by creating a group. If you have a corporation, if you have an organization, then you can say all the employees in the accounting department will belong to the same group at accounting and they'll have permission to modify certain pages while the rest of the employees can just view the pages managed by accounting, etc., etc. So in this case, I can create a group called CCS 395 and issue permissions to this group. But in this case, the group is limited to read because I haven't modified that and I haven't created, I, I haven't entered any user in that group. And this would be a single user, the fictional profile that I always create for this kind of work, Andrea Demo, has this. So in here, we're talking about the lowest level of access. This particular individual, what can he do here? Just read. And of course, I, I could easily, with two clicks, I can change the level of Andrea Demo from read to create, and there it is. And I also have a table with a summary of all the permissions that I granted to anyone. And of course, it's uh, uh, always important to uh, keep that in mind. So let's go back to this level and we'll go into the configuration settings. In here you find a lot of different sections, right, from the name of the wiki to all kinds of technical details. Again, you don't have to worry about this. This is done in the background, managed in the background by me. You just focus on the creation of one page for the assignment, or if you want to use this software for your project, you just focus on the creation of multiple pages, the links, etc., the design of the pages, the content, etc., but you don't have to worry about these technicalities. However, for now, we need to scroll this and go. There it is. To this section that says disable wiki actions. In here, I can control the interface and I can control some of the public functions. And uh, as you can see, register is disabled. Subscribe and unsubscribe, delete your own account. So these are things that cannot be done. Someone coming to the website will not find a register button that would allow them to register themselves. As I said, I once forgot to disable registration and some people entered uh, my, one of my wikis, a wiki for a class I used to teach for the Italian program and created about a thousand different profiles to give the impression that this was a reputable forum about fungus. Uh, and because fungus gets a lot of heat uh, when people are searching and then they introduce links. There was, they couldn't upload anything so and they, and they couldn't inject the pages with JavaScript or uh, uh, PHP. They were not allowed to do that by the configuration, but they added links to pages that themselves were malicious pages with Trojans and other kinds of malware, okay? Um, subscribe, unsubscribe is the, uh, uh, sets the ability to follow a page and to be notified about the changes to a page. However, it's not working reliably. That's why I don't keep it as a function because it may be disappointing. And of course, I don't want students to accidentally delete their account. So, 
when you're ready, when everyone is ready, including anyone who might have entered in the last few minutes, I will uncheck register, I will save this configuration, and then you have to go to the class website in Notion, go to week seven, click on test site, and be ready to refresh and click register. Okay, so do you want to do that now? Let's make sure that everyone is in, in the test site, either on their phone or their computer. Okay, so find the link to the test site from the class web page and go there and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of time and then I'll ask you when everyone is there, I will proceed with the next steps. Is it the one with the numbers? The one with the numbers? What do you mean? Oh, the 20, 22 plus pages? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but uh, from the portal of the demo site, I'll show you. You, you can access that and, and then log in. Yeah. But first, you, you'll have to register. Okay? Is everyone inside the testing site called 2020? Okay? So the one that has, if you're there, you'll have, of course the page will be different, but you will have this in the top corner, this symbol, which is the standard logo for DocuWiki, right, with green links, and the red links are new pages with a double square parenthesis uh, that are the code to create pages and the name of 2020. This was created in the fall of 2020 when this class was last offered. But since the software itself has not changed since then, there is no newer version, newer stable version of DocuWiki. I've decided to use this. No, no point in creating another one if everything is the same, okay? So if you're here, Wait and for my actions. Okay, so I'll uncheck register because again I'll do this and then I'll change it again in a minute. I hit save. Now at this point, if you're inside this 2020 site, you should go here to test pages where you see a bunch of green links that I created and we'll go around and have a count and that number will be your page. But the first thing you have to do is don't do anything else, just wait for my instructions. What you have to do is look here and at this point one of the links here should be register. Click register and quickly enter your username, first name and initial in lowercase letters, no spaces, you can use underscores or hyphen, add your real name, add your Stony Brook email, and then of course press enter, confirm, okay. Okay, so do this quickly. and I'll be ready to revert that so that no intruders come into the website. Because right now, anyone with that link can register. So I'm about to disable this. Has everyone registered? Okay, 10, nine. Tony? I'm still oh, yeah, go ahead. Yes? Do you want us to log in? Wait before you log in. Right now, if you've done that, check your inbox. Make sure that the password is there and copy that password. If the message with the password is not in your inbox, check your spam folder, please. Wait, username is first name dash initial? 
username should be lowercase, so in your case, Antonio lowercase, and then underscore or hyphen, and then C, the initial of your last name, right? So you know it's something that you can memorize and something that I can recognize, right? So I know that there are no outsiders in this wiki. And then you put your real name, which will not be displayed, but I'll be able to see that this account is associated with your name and I know you are a student. And finally, your Stony Brook video account. Okay, I'll wait just a few seconds more and then I'll make the registration disappear. Of course, anyone who wasn't here today can contact me and I can create a profile for them. Yeah, sorry? Yeah, sorry, I just still want to do Okay, wait, don't do anything though. Yeah, you can log in, but don't do anything more. So, okay, as of now, Registration is reverted. If I go back to that particular section called disabled, you see that once again, registration is disabled. No one can register themselves. Because that would be too dangerous. So I go back to these test pages. And as I said, make sure you find your password in the inbox of your Gmail EDU account. If it is not there, check your spam folder. Once you have your password, log in using the link where it says log out for me, you will find login and log in, make sure, of course it's case sensitive. So make sure that all the lowercase and uppercase letters are reproduced correctly. Is everyone logged in? Were you able to find the email? So we'll start a count, okay? And the number that you count loud now will be the number of the page in here that you have to click on in order to create the page. And then I'll guide you through the first steps and then you'll continue by yourself. So we'll start in here from one, loud. One. Yeah. Okay, so once you have a number, you can log in and click on that page and create that page. Antonio? Three, four, five. Okay, we we'll continue from here. From there? Okay, so that is the page on which you're working. So you click on that page and I'll use 43 because no one is here to claim that number, right? Just to reproduce the, what we're doing. If you just came in, you'll have to come here to be signed in as a, as a user, but for now you can just see what we're doing or work with someone else. So if I'm 43, of course you have different numbers, but if I'm 43, I click in here and you can do the same steps or just watch. And of course you see here that I have create this page on the sidebar, okay? And I click on that and in here I have my applet, my editor in the browser and the first thing I want to do is create a title for this page. I do this through the use of six equal signs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello. <laughs> now, I put a space. I don't have to put a space. I could begin the text here, but it's not good practice. You want clarity and elegance in your coding language. So I put a space there and then the title should be standard because otherwise I, have a, I would have a hard time finding your assignment when you complete this page. So you can call this 
the page of, and then put again your first name and the initial of your last name. Now, this is text, so you can use lowercase, uppercase, right? This is not just code. So please put the page of so that I'll be able to find everyone. And then, of course, I have the closing tag, six equal signs to close. And then I can start writing. And once I have any text in here, I click Save. And you see not only that I have this page, but now when I go back to the test pages, then you see that all the pages the students have created, the green link with the title automatically change, which is one of the automated features that make creating content in a wiki easier, okay? Now, keep this in mind. So, for the next 20 minutes or so, do something with your page. Start doing something with your page, which eventually will become your digital assignment. And keep in mind that at the beginning of this test page, you find a link to this page. This is a standard page that is created automatically by the wiki. The formatting syntax the nice part about this page is that every time you add an extension to the page, to the wiki, then the formatting syntax page includes instructions for that extensions as well. So if you want, you can open this in a different tab and in here you find the basic code, right? The table of content is here. So if I want to know how to create a footnote, I always find the code in here. You can add footnotes with double parentheses. This is a footnote, right? And you find the demonstration up, up here, right? This is how I created a, a footnote. Or uh, this is how you create, use an image as a link. Or you'll find how to include an image, etc. Including images, for example, is very simple. Just need to find my crayon. So, just as a review, right? This would be italics. This is bold. That's the basic things. I, don't, I won't put underline because you don't want to use underline. Underline is for links. So it would be amateurish to use underline a lot. But uh, so the, to create a bulleted list, I have to start the line with space, right? Space, space, and then asterisk. That's a bulleted list. Or you put space, space at the beginning of the line and it's a numbered list. If you just have two spaces, that is code, meaning that nothing will be interpreted. If you want to create a page, you use square, square, square bracket, square bracket, and then again, don't use spaces, right? Use underscores, no page, then this will become a clickable link and I can create a sub page. For a link, I can just write something with www and becomes clickable, but otherwise I can put square square and then in that case I have to begin with https etc and then close it if I want to add a label, I put a vertical bar and I put the label for the link. If I want to put an image, I use curly brackets. The link to an image, so it has to be something that ends with JPEG or similar. And then once again, I can put a caption, rather a tooltip and then curly brackets to close. If I want to add 
a YouTube video, curly brackets, then YouTube, then this angular parenthesis, and then a YouTube link. And, and again, you find this and more inside the formatting section, which is very easy to read and easy to apply. And then, of course, I'm here to assist you so you can also ask questions. Okay. Uh, so, if anyone entered after we created the profiles, and if you want to come here, I can help you set up the profile. Otherwise, sit next to someone and work with them. And if you're comfortable enough, you can call me uh, near and I can come and help you. I'll stop in 10 or 15 minutes so that we can have a little bit of a discussion about the process or while we're having the discussion, you can ask me to click on your page and show that page. To everyone. Okay. And as I said, the process is a bit more involved. There is more coding, right? Compared to Notion where you just write, feels more natural, feels more 2022, and this feels more like the 2000s, right? But this was the history, the roots of the wiki movement, digital movement was like that. You will see that media wiki, the language used by Wikipedia, is in fact very similar, heavily based on markdown and always based on the idea that you have the code in one view modality and then you click and you can preview your code formatting, but you don't have what you see is what you get, editors, unless you, you put a plug in for that. But circa 2005, this was uh, a, a step ahead to be able to manage content without uploading, downloading files without an HTML editor. And it continues to be a very convenient, expeditious way to create wikis. And it's a robust application where you can have thousands of pages inside the same wiki without slowing down. Uh, you can have thousands of images uh, uh, uploaded without slowing down. I, I found the limit for my wiki on cinema at around 15 to 20,000 photographs. After I passed that, then it became slow. And these were all 99% uh, compressed JPEG, so not very compressed, all 1500 pixel wide, because I wanted uh, students of cinema courses to be able to focus on the details. So this is how much material could be uploaded on a single wiki before it slowed down. Not that it stopped or crashed, it slowed down. Okay, so you have another five to 10 minutes to work on your page and start thinking about what you want to do with your digital assignment, because once again, even for the digital assignment of DocuWiki, it cannot be a random page. You have to think of some kind of content. And today, it doesn't matter if you want to write random things, but by the time you complete your assignment, there has to be some kind of content topic that justifies the formatting. It doesn't have to be academic content, but something that justifies the inclusion of sections and subsections, links, embedding videos and images, etc. In this case, you're not uploading anything. If you need an image or a video, you are using the links and therefore you're doing something that's called fetching. That is to say, you are getting material from someone else's site when the page is displayed. So it's not a, a completely legitimate uh, practice, cannot be done uh, for a, a website that doesn't grant you those rights. So my uh, suggestion is for the images of your page, go to Wikipedia. 
you will find images of everything. Or if you have another place where you can find copyright free images, that's fine. Otherwise, it would not be a legitimate practice. For YouTube, that's fine. That they don't mind. Because if you if a producer of content on YouTube, if the YouTuber doesn't want you to embed a video, they will limit those rights. And in fact, don't use a video that cannot be embedded. If you find that a video doesn't play inside your page, you have to find something else. It means that the producer of that video is not allowing embedding, which is something you select in the configuration of a video. So you can allow people to embed your content or not. Another five minutes. So if you're done with some random experimentation, you can start creating additional sections that will be part of eventually of your digital assignment. Don't delete what you're trying today because you can delete it later. Just add to them and make sure you create sections, right? So the title, six equal signs. Then H2 level is five equal signs. H3 is four equal signs, etc., etc., until two is the minimum, the lowest level for a section. And some of those sections will automatically populate the table of content. Yes, come, come here. That's why I said before. We can do it now. It won't take long. Yeah. So I've disabled the image so people cannot see what we are typing. Okay? And we'll do it differently. We'll Yeah, yeah I, I'm experiencing the same thing now. So don't don't worry if you if you weren't able to save your page, just wait, and then once you're able to reopen the page, you will see on the right side the icon with the crayon is changed and includes a compass, meaning that you have a draft and you'll be able to restore that draft. Evidently. All of us accessing this was enough to slow it down. It shouldn't happen. I have four gigabytes of RAM on this virtual server. That should be enough for 30 people. Maybe it's, it's also the connection in here that has been saturated. So no, I'm, I'm blocked as they are. So send me an email and I'll send you back your username and password, okay? So you'll be able to work on this starting from this afternoon. So don't panic, just wait, try again. And let's, in fact, let's do something different. Okay, so nobody tries to click refresh the page, only the, the people in the first row do that. Once you regain access, we'll stop you from doing anything. Just save what you've done now and we'll move to the next row. Let's try that. And again, I don't know if it is the internet here. It must be the internet here, not uh, the, the, the server capacity, the server's capacity, as I said. Because this is not just some space that I rent on another server. It is an actual virtual computer that I'm paying for with faster storage, SSD storage, and RAM made available to my users. Okay, was anyone able here to recover their page and save them? Yep. Okay, so stop any activity in the first row.
please people on the second row try to access your page and save them and we'll do the same for the others in a minute once you've saved your page stop there we'll continue with the discussion and then when you work from home hopefully you won't have the same problems and if you do let me know because I'll contact the company okay is everyone okay with their pages Hello? Yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> so let's open the discussion for five minutes at this point. You've tried Notion, you've tried Evernote, you've tried DocuWiki. I want to hear your feedback about any of those apps or any kind of comparison between apps or even I like X, but I would like it better if, and then add some of your wishes trying to imagine how your ideal digital process handling knowledge content would be uh, configured, okay? So anyone, and if you want, in reference to DocuWiki, you can instruct me to open your page and put it on the screen while you're talking. Okay, anyone? Oh, yes, sorry. Absolutely, yeah, which is what I expect of students. And I myself have been using DocuWiki for many years. I still use, use it for some courses, especially when the content of those courses doesn't change that much or doesn't need to be very dynamic. Uh, but in, both in my personal life and in teaching a variety of classes, I'm more inclined toward the use of Notion, although there are things that I resent about Notion, the fact that it can be slow, uh, that uh, the limit in terms of a database is kind of low. Once I hit three or 400 nodes, then it becomes slow when I try to filter out uh, content. So I don't like it that much. And then, of course, I see that the direction of the app is more towards a corporate audience, so more about teamwork and regulating access, etc., cetera, and, and less creative on the function. In fact, the last app I'm experimenting as a new app since last week is Remnote. And I find Remnote a very good combination of some of the feature in Workflow with some of the features in uh, Evernote. So I almost always try to experiment with something else. Other comments? Yes. Just a quick question off of what you said. If Notion is going towards more corporate, how could it be slow after three or four hundred nodes? Because wouldn't that be a counteractive to the corporate use with more pages? No. No. And then the reason is that if you're a company and you sign a contract with them, you will have a different kind of power at your disposal. Okay. It's the individual user with an individual, even a professional plan, that finds those limitations. But enterprise contracts do not even have a price. The price is negotiated based on your needs. So if you tell me I have 10,000 employees and I need to store 2 million documents, then I can just say, okay, your, your price is $150,000 per month, and this is how many servers I allocate for you, or this is how I send my staff to work on your server so that those nodes are, are stored locally because I set up your company server. So you're fine, you, you just need to have the, the wallet, the, the, the money, the moolah to uh, support your needs. Other questions or comments? Yes? I think Notion and Evernote, they have more features probably than DocuWiki. Well, actually DocuWiki has more features, um, provided you put in plugins, because there are hundreds and hundreds of plugins, so you can really customize it Again, it does look like a dinosaur. It looks rigid. But in terms of sheer functionality, it is superior to Evernote, certainly. For example, the one feature we will all try at some point is transclusion, 
which allows you to create a page made of content from other pages that changes dynamically. And I don't find that in Evernote, and that for me is an essential feature for a wiki. But, it, but again, you're right in saying that all those features in Evernote are built in. In here, I have to select the plugin, I have to install the plugin, I have to configure the plugin. Right. So, I know, I know more Evernote, technical. I know in Evernote, like one of their goals was to make the site more user friendly. Yeah. So that's good. And, and they were successful. Some of their features. Yeah. And certainly, if you compare, I can use, I can modify a wiki from my phone. No problems there. But it's much easier to create a new note in Evernote when I'm outside on my phone and I have an idea that I want to store or the most common use for me when I'm outside and I want to create a note in Evernote would be, I see, let's say, the cover of a book that I want to read at some point and I create a camera note with that picture uh, and, and I know that the words on the cover will be automatically read and interpreted by the system, and I can add a few tags, etc., or I can add a recorded note to uh, an Evernote note. So those functions are very agile. It means that I can add to my database no matter where I go, and that's why I have less than a thousand pages in Notion, but I have 10,000 notes, almost 10,000 notes in Evernote. But they tend to be more and more personal related to the family budget rather than academic so that tells you something one last question or comment okay so we'll resume after the spring break enjoy your spring break i have collected all the links to your evernote pages the last assignment i haven't corrected them yet which is something i will do over the next week and you will receive the grade and the comments via email for that assignment i will not add them to your page 